Master Chef is back, searching for the country's best amateur cook. Come on. <laughs> oh, you can't say it's got chilli in it and not make it chilli. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, no. The contestants battle for a place in the quarter final. It's a masterpiece. Only the best will make it through to the final challenges. Don't slow down. Yeah. Everybody, pudding! Absolutely beautiful. It's an incredible piece of cooking. They want to realise one dream, and that's become the MasterChef champion. Kid in a sweet shop, that's me. Let's find the stars. These eight amateur cooks all aspire to become MasterChef champion. But only three will make it through to the quarter-final. I'm really nervous, but who isn't? I think you have to be a bit of a robot not to be nervous for MasterChef. I think this would kind of confirm to me that I'm not that bad at cooking, I'm actually quite good at cooking. As long as I feel I've done myself proud, then, then I'm happy with that. Hashtag, of course, I want to win. <laughs> Welcome to MasterChef, a chance for you to indulge in a real passion. Show me and John what you're capable of. Just through those doors is the MasterChef market, and it's full of the most amazing produce from all around the world. And all we want from you is one extraordinary plate of food. And it's important this round, because at the end of it, three of you are going home. You'll have 10 minutes to collect your ingredients. Off to market you go. Today's market ingredients include chicken wings, quail, pancetta, brown shrimp, salmon, and smoked haddock. There's also a range of cheeses, grains, and pulses. Let's see what we can do. I've got a few ideas in my head. I'm hoping for the best. There's a good selection of stuff. Never had a purple carrot before, so that'll be new. <laughs> that is an Aladdin's cave of ingredients waiting for a magic spell to be put on. Stick on and just try and cook as if I was at home. There's no different than coming home from work and seeing what's in the fridge. It's just what everybody else can do, that's the problem. There we are. You've got one hour and 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember, at the end of this, three of you are going home. Let's cook. Go. Go, go, go. Great. The 23-year-old Adam comes from West Yorkshire and sells insurance for a living. A lot of my previous work experience has been with working as a waiter in restaurants and cafes. And that's where my love kind of lies. I used to get in trouble a lot because I'd just be waiting at the past, like asking the chefs, oh, what are you cooking, how are you doing that, what are you chucking in there? Adam, you were in and out of that market like a rocket. Yeah, I wanted to get my hands on something good, I suppose. I picked a quail, and I've never cooked a quail before. So, if you've never cooked a quail before, what are you going to cook it like? Like a chicken, but smaller. Probably a third of the time, maybe. And then I'm going to serve that with some champ, which is just mashed potato with some um, spring onions in. Keep at it, mate. Thank you. Love chomp, really, really do. But somehow or another, Adam's going to make that plate look fantastic because he's promising beautiful things. 32-year-old Ajit learned to cook watching his mum make traditional Indian food. 
My mum always tells me that I've got a good taste for flavour, so I think my taste buds are quite up there. If you think it's good, I think other people like it too. What are you doing here on MasterChef? Got family and friends back at home who thinks I could uh, whack up a dish now and again. I'm going to make you a chicken uh, tomato-based curry with spiced potato and basmati rice. Curry time. Curry time. He's cooking the chicken inside that tomato sauce. My concern is that skin's a little bit flobby. Twenty-nine-year-old Giovanna comes from a family who all love to eat. My parents worked really hard. They worked full time, so they worked quite late. I often would cook when I got home from school for me and my brother and sister because we'd be really hungry and we didn't want to wait. Giovanna's promising us a roasted quail, which has been first marinated with honey and spring onions. She's serving that with a caponata, which is a classic dish of aubergines, celery, tomatoes and raisins. And then she's going to serve the whole thing with a dukkha, nuts which have been roasted to serve with some cumin as well. And it's an interesting combination, and I'm not quite sure how the dish holds together. I'm named after my Italian grandmother, my nonna. She's 96, going strong. And uh, have you ever cooked with her? Oh, yeah. My nonna doesn't cook anymore, but likes to pass comment. She's very critical. Is she? Yeah. Twenty-five minutes gone, all right? Glasgow-based Linda has dined in some of the world's finest Michelin-starred restaurants. I'm nowhere near that kind of level I'm cooking at home, but I do try kind of difficult recipes. I like buying kitchen equipment, sadly enough, so you know, I've got a sous vide machine at home, you know, food processor and stuff, so I use them pretty much every day. I'm baking a beetroot and fennel salad to go along with the salmon, which I'm going to pan roast, and along with some new potatoes, a white wine and cream sauce with some dill. Who do you cook for at home? Um, my son, who's 17. What does he think of mum's cooking? Well, he thinks it's great. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> His mum's not a great cook. Salmon and cream, oily fish and cream. It sounds to me like the cream sauce is going to be the foreigner on the plate. 40 minutes have gone. That means you're halfway. 36-year-old Lindsay travels the globe as a drummer and DJ. If you're travelling all the time, do you actually get a chance to cook as well? No, it tends to be either I'm travelling and then I'm eating out, um, or I'm at home and in my downtime, or if I'm gigging, you know, in London in the evening, I've got all day to kind of play around, and I find food really relaxing. You've got cutlery earrings. <laughs> you noticed, yeah. You've got knife and fork earrings. I do, yeah. That's how I remember which side to eat with. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay can use some smoked haddock, she's got some salsify, and she's going to make us a celery out puree a lentil puree, and then make a herb butter to go across the top. It could be really, really delicious. My approach to a lot of things is don't let the fact that you can't do something not let you have a go at it. I mean, you're never going to kill anyone. If it, if it looks a bit weird, just don't eat it, you know. Healthcare assistant Catherine credits her mum, dad and gran for her passion for food. My timing isn't the best, I have to say. I, I, I cook at a leisurely pace, so I, I, I have to speed it up a little bit more, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine's making a brownie, and it's not just any brownie, it's triple chocolate brownie with marshmallows and pecan nuts. She's serving the whole lot with an amaretto and cherry cream. They're the things that dreams are made of. What is it you love about a brownie? I just think you could just chuck everything in. It's like the equivalent of an omelette for baking, I think. Fine, <laughs> fine. OK, OK. How good a cook are you? I'm all right. I have my off days, um, but I'm an OK cook. 
I'm not, I don't like to blow my own trumpet. You know I love a pud. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Twenty-three-year-old James has been responsible for cooking the family meals since he was 15 years old. Just sitting with the contestants today and seeing what everyone, everyone's cooking really makes me want to do well and I want to be the best. I'm making egg yolk ravioli with mushroom ricotta inside, egg yolk, um, and that's going to be served with pancetta. I love breakfast, so this is almost a little take on breakfast, so bacon, eggs and mushrooms. James is also doing a white wine sauce with it. I think that white wine may be a mistake. It may be too harsh and too acidic to go with the egg yolk. Time's flying. You've got 15 minutes left. Just 15 minutes, please. Motorbike fanatic Jo likes to compete with her husband in the kitchen. I think the worst critic is the dog. He's very fussy. You can't give him a, a chip without ketchup on it. He won't eat it. You can't give him a cracker without butter on it. He won't eat it. At least John and Greg seem to tuck in regardless. <laughs> We've got sticky chicken wings in the oven with soy sauce, which is a really, really lovely way of cooking the chicken wings. Then we've got a frittata, which is a large omelette with bacon, eggs, turnips, potatoes, and brown shrimp. On the side of that, we've got a vegetable salad. My concern is the three things don't belong together. Who do you cook for? It's only me and my husband at home now. Um, all of the kids have grown up and left. We had five between us. You had a house with five kids in? Yeah. Did you cook every night? Yeah. Wow. Generally seven different dishes as well. Why? Because they're so fussy. You have two minutes to finish that dish, please. Two minutes. Sixty seconds. Time's up. Thank you. Well done. That looks nice. Well done. First up is insurance salesman Adam, who has served his roasted quail with champ potatoes, roasted carrots and beetroot, crispy parma ham, and a mushroom shallot white wine sauce. Your quail is lovely. Lovely, soft flesh. I, I really like that. Your champ, in my opinion, needs more seasoning. However, you've put salty, crispy ham across the top. So possibly there's your seasoning. Acidic cream around a mushroom wouldn't match anything, in my opinion. It's not a good sauce. I think you've got some, some good technique. I think you just need to find a way of amalgamating your ideas. But good on you for being ambitious, Adam. Thank you. I thought I'd made a, like a dreadful dish. I've never cooked quail before, so I'm really happy that you both liked how I'd cook the quail. Thank you, Adam. Ajit, up you come. Business manager Ajit cooked his chicken wings in a tomato curry sauce and served them with chilli potatoes and basmati rice. Your sauce around your chicken wings is so ferociously hot and the chicken wings have been boiled for so long they've gone really tough. All the fatty skin has gone all soggy around the outside of it. They've got to be crisped up. I bet you're disappointed now, aren't you? Yeah, very disappointed, because I can cook a lot better. So many things I could have done differently. I 
got stuck to it. Oh, never mind. Music teacher Giovanna marinated her quail in honey and served it with a caponata made with fennel, celery, shallots and aubergines, ducker of hazelnut and almonds, and a garnish of pomegranate, parsley, dill and mint. I like the flavour of your quail. I like the seasoning on the outside. I'd like the skin a little crispy. I love the herbs and the mint and the sharpness you've got. I, I really like that. I find your, your medley of aubergines and tomatoes over-reduced okay. and going too sweet and too strong. I like some of your flavours. I think your cooking can be polished up. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be very hard to do that because I think you've got a really good foundation. I'm really pleased. I didn't embarrass myself. And they said some really nice things. And I can just get better now, hopefully. <laughs> That's the idea. Management consultant Linda's pan-fried salmon has been served with crushed potatoes, beetroot puree, carrots, and a creamy thyme and white wine sauce. Your salmon and potatoes are cooked really, really nicely. However, your salmon skin is all... Yeah, it's soggy. ...flobby and soggy. Cream and salmon doesn't work for me. Um, the whole dish needs a bit of spice, it needs a bit of acid, and it needs a bit of life. OK. The carrots and the beetroot aren't setting it alight. Okay. However, it's, there's some decent cooking of the fish and the potatoes. I would say more disappointed than happy with the dish because I feel as if I can cook better and I feel as if that when I do cook, I can get the flavours right and clearly didn't get the flavours right today. DJ Lindsay has served her smoked haddock with salsify, chicory, purple broccoli, leeks, lentil and celeriac purees and a brown shrimp and parsley sauce. Smoky fish flavours, salty little shrimp flavour, nice creamy purees that are seasoned. You've got bitter chicory. That may well be the best piece of salsa I've tasted in a long, long time. Oh, thank you. I am really impressed. Squeeze a lemon away from absolutely unbelievable. That's amazing. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, great. To hear that the first time, I mean, apart from a squeeze of lemon, I'll take that. That's not too bad. <laughs> Healthcare worker Catherine used white, dark and milk chocolate to make her brownie, which is filled with marshmallows and pecans and served with an amaretto cherry cream and berry compote. You've made for us now a, ch a chocolate cake. It's still quite moist in the middle, it's crusty on the outside. I, I quite like that. I particularly love the, the amaretto flavour in the cream with the cherries. I think that's a, a delightfully warm, very boozy but fruity flavour. Very, very good. What's troubling me is that you set out to create a brownie, yeah. which you haven't made. The whole thing is very sweet and very sticky, but there's nice bits of work here. I just believe it could do with a bit more elegance. Yeah. OK. I'm feeling uh, very uh, confused because the reviews was quite mixed. Cosmetics sales manager James filled his ravioli with mushrooms, ricotta and egg yolk and served it with a white wine and pancetta sauce. So we're looking for a nice oozy egg yolk as we cut through. Fingers crossed. Good. <laughs> There's bits on here, James, I really like. I'm very impressed that you made your own pasta and you have a lovely egg yolk sitting in the centre. 
but the bit of sauce you have on the outside is very, very salty and very, very sharp. OK. To make your own pasta, make a ravioli and cook it so that the egg yolk is still soft. Shows a good touch, shows a good timing. I think you've got some skill. I think I've showed them a glimpse of what I can do. And fingers crossed, if, I'm, if I go any further in the competition, I can show them a little bit more. Last up is registered nurse Jo, who served soy and honey chicken wings alongside a brown shrimp, pancetta, potato and turnip frittata with a courgette, caper and shallot salad. I've got soy sauce sweet Chinese flavoured chicken wings on top of a vegetable salad with capers in, which is salty and sharp. And then I've got a frittata, which is overcooked with turnip and brown shrimp. It doesn't all belong on one plate, Joe. You've got to have a finished dish in mind before you start. What they said was absolutely right. It was, there was three different things going on. But it's done now, so I think I can do about it now. You and I, I think, agree upon one thing. The standout cook today is Lindsay. Lindsay, head and shoulders above the competition at the moment. I think Adam has actually got promise. He was game enough to take the quail. Didn't like his sauce. However, I've seen enough from him to want to see some more. Another one I'd like to chuck in the mix is James. Agreed. To serve a ravioli with an egg yolk, perfectly cooked and soft so it runs out, that shows skill. Anybody else in the room you really like? Yes, there is somebody else I'd like to talk about, and that's Giovanna. The caponata didn't work. It was overreduced. But I think that she's got cookery skill. I've got a couple here that stand out for the wrong reasons. Joe the nurse with, with the shrimp, turnip and potato frittata alongside sticky wings. I can't see how we can put her through. You didn't like Ajit's dish at all, and I found those wings really challenging. Adjit and Joe go home. That leaves Linda and Catherine. One of those is going home. I just want that opportunity to show that I can do much more and that I'm quite a versatile cook. You kind of know that you can do better. That's what's disappointing, isn't it? But just have to wait and see. Three of you are leaving the competition. First person leaving us is Joe. Thanks, Joe. The second person leaving us is Ajit. Thanks, Ajit. The third person leaving us is Linda. Thanks, Linda. I think probably a bit too safe. I do feel as if I can let myself down. To actually be in that kitchen and, and cook in there, at least I got, you know, I can say I've been there and done that. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and Today I've lost. You've now earned the right to cook your own dishes. Tough call today, because you're not just presenting your food to John and me, you will serve the winner and finalists from 2013. That's Syra Hamilton, Larkin Sen, and of course, the champion, Natalie Coleman. One hour and 15 minutes, two courses. At the end of this, two of you will go home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go.
think I've shown them that I'm quite ca calm in the kitchen. I think I showed some good technical ability by making a ravioli. Now I've got to really execute my next two dishes to the highest standard. James cooking is a piece of roast cod. He's serving it with a squeaky risotto and a caper butter. Could be very, very delicious. Dessert is profiteroles. Oh, I love profiteroles. I remember eating them as a kid. I remember making them as an apprentice. I remember making them when I was growing up. They can go wrong very, very easily. You making your own shoe pastry? Yes. James, get you. Get you, your flash cook. Can you do all this in time? Um, I'm hoping so. I think right. profiteroles um, are quite a complex dish to do, so fingers crossed uh, I can get that right for you. I feel excited to be um, doing my own dishes, but I feel nervous because I know not everybody would enjoy the way I put flavours together. And I think that's why um, it could go either way today, so I'm not sure. Minute steak, avocado cream, caramelised onions across the top, and then a corn with parmesan and lime. Never had it before, but the smile on her face gives me confidence. For dessert, we've got roasted plantain, salted caramel, pecans, and a rum and raisin ice cream. There's probably lots of people who think plantain is a dessert. It might be unusual. It's a banana. At the end of the day, you know what? Why not as a dessert? This is taking flavours from all over the world. Mm. Tell me how this comes about. It comes about because I think I have a lot of friends and families from different cultures. You can't help but to be influenced by that. Have you got presentation nailed as well, do you think? No. That's not you, I'll is it? On, that, that's not me. Giovanna's food, roasted partridge on the crown, served with a wet polenta, a sourdough crumb around the outside, and loads and loads of herbs and some little gem lettuce. She's got to squeeze every inch of flavour out of that partridge because polenta itself is bland. Does your nonna like this dish? What she'd say is she hates anything that's too dry. She will tell me immediately, it's too dry. Uh, so... She's Russian? Yes, I was going to say. She's a Russian. She's a Russian <laughs> Italian. She's Italian. Dessert is a poached pear served with a ginger crumb and a lemon mascarpone cream. And not a lot of cooking going on. Italians don't tend to have very rich desserts. We just had fruit after a meal. That's all we ever had. So I quite like my desserts to be quite clean and quite relatively fresh. I don't like a lot of heaviness. So I think this dessert really shows that. James is a bit of a pickle. His first batch of profiteroles hasn't worked. Right now, we've got flat profiteroles. He's on his second batch. That's what you call the master chef disaster. sort of worried somehow because of what they said in the last round were just so nice. I'm really scared that I can't keep this up. <laughs> I'm going to do um, a ballotine of crocodile. Um, it's minced crocodile, so it's quite hard to get hold of crocodile here. With a kind of homage to the food chain, it's going to be crocodile surrounding chicken, surrounding some herbs. I like a bit of fun in my food as well, and I'm serving it with some leek uh, and some uh, Cavallo Nero. Do you know how many crocodile ballotines we've had on MasterChef? Oh, it's a cliche, I know, isn't it? <laughs> Crocodile's a great meat because it's very, very lean, and it's really the same as using a sort of mixture of chicken and fish. Her dessert sounds fantastic. 
thin slices of pineapple made into cannelloni wrapper, and then inside is sweet ricotta. She's gonna serve that with some raisins, some pine nuts, and little bits of mint. We've also got coffee pearls. Pineapple and mint and a cup of coffee? I don't know, I think the coffee's a bit out there somewhere. I can't remember ever seeing anything this daring this early in the competition. There's no way she's gonna get it all done. What are you going to make that's going to impress today? Pan fried sea bass, and I'm doing it with a soy dressing, um, which is infused with ginger, lemongrass, coriander, lime, and yeah, it's going to give it that Asian influence to the dish with some pak choy. And a dessert? So for dessert, I'm doing a traditional Yorkshire parking. It's almost a, a treacle sponge cake with oatmeal and a little bit of ginger. I'm going to be serving it with some cinder toffee, which I've got bubbling away here and some treacle toffee sauce and some creme anglaise as well. So it's kind of an ode to bonfire night because that's a bit like a big part of my childhood. A few worries with the dessert. It might not rise, I might overcook it, I might undercook it. It's my grandma's recipe, so fingers crossed <laughs> it'll be good because hers is delicious. I didn't egg and milk in. Quick, 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 in a bowl, quick. Quick. Adam forgot to put the eggs in his first batch of parking. He saved it, he saved it, but I just hope he's got enough time. Yeah, fresh is on. Since winning MasterChef in 2013, Natalie Coleman has written a cookbook, runs her own restaurant kitchen, and teaches children how to cook. And then chop it up, yeah? I think my advice for today's contestants is to stay calm, work cleanly and neat, and just cook what you really like eating, because, you know, I cooked what I liked eating and it worked. Life after MasterChef doesn't get a lot easier really quickly. If you want to do something about it, you've got to work hard, sort of decide what it is that you're good at and, and what you really want to do, and then you get on and, and do it. So I'm a chef now full time, and people have been paying for it. It's amazing. <laughs> 2013 runner up Larkin Sen left the world of law and now runs his own restaurant in Newport. I'd much rather be on this side of the table. Everyone's an armchair critic, so, uh, and I'm no different. Cheers, guys. Cheers, nice Cheers. to see you. MJ. Four minutes, James. Thank you. Are you ready to go? Just waiting on my cod. I think the danger to the dish is the cooking of the fish, because you don't want it to go flaky and dry out. But also the risotto, you don't want it too al dente, because we do want to keep our teeth. Yeah. I mean, on the surface, it's quite a simple dish, but actually, there's nowhere to hide, is there? He needs to do everything perfectly. OK, James, they're waiting for you now. Hiya. You've got a pan seared piece of cod on a squid ink risotto topped with samphire that's been cooked in a anchovy and caper lemon butter. Cheers, mate. Thank Enjoy. you. Thank you. I think he's cooked the fish really well. It's absolutely juicy and delightful. Yeah, I could have done with a bit more seasoning, but it's a very, very nice piece of fish. I think the risotto itself is lacking in flavour. It doesn't, like, wow me. I think maybe it could do with a little bit more, for me anyway, like a big punch of flavour. The lemon butter and capers with the samphire, I think, is lovely. The piece of fish is overcooked and it's starting to fall apart and the risotto underneath is not cooked enough.
We've all had profiteroles go wrong, haven't we? So let's hope he uh, yeah, doesn't cave to the pressure. They look good, mate. Thank you. They look good. Two and a half, James. OK. Good job. For dessert, you've got homemade profiteroles, um, and they're filled with a strawberry cream, uh, white chocolate on top, and a few pieces of strawberry. Well done, you did it. Well, three times lucky. He's done quite well. I mean, he kind of let slip, didn't he, that he'd had a bit of a profiterole meltdown, but he's got them out and they're all cooked really well. There's fresh strawberries on there, there's fresh cocoa, the cream's nice. What's not to like about it? This is just dry. It's a dry pile of shells filled with some cream and very, very sweet set white chocolate. Mentally exhausted. Um, that must have been the hardest thing I've ever, ever done. Yeah, it definitely got to me today. Catherine's cooking this minute steak, so it really does only have to be cooked for a minute, doesn't it? Otherwise, it's going to get overcooked and tough and chewy. Cuban, I think it's going to have, like, a sweet, but also sort of, like, a spice going through it as well. It sounds like a bit of a carnival, really. You've got three minutes. OK, Catherine, and we need to go. There you go. Is that the last thing to go on the plate? Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. So I made a pan-fried minute steak topped with caramelised onion and um, avocado cream with a um, spinach and tomato sautéed topped with um, lime parmesan um, roasted corn. It's not the prettiest plate I've ever seen. The steak, which is obviously the main event, you know, it's cooked really well, it's still nice and pink. But would I necessarily choose all these other things to go with it? Like Personally, no. Got a bit of Cuban mixed with a bit of Italian. I just think together it's just not right. There's an unusual sweetness and spiciness to the steak that, uh, although not unpleasant, I, I find unusual. The corn with the lime and the parmesan cheese on top of the tomato stew is inspired, but that fat isn't very nice. Roasted salted caramel plantain, pecans, coconut rum and raisin ice cream. It's kind of like a really just a pina colada almost, isn't it? Ice creams can go a bit wrong, can't they? It could be grainy. There are obviously dangers there. Catherine, you've got three minutes for that dessert. OK. All sure. right, what, what do we need to do now? So just play it up. Are you happy with everything, Catherine? Not really, but... Um... <laughs> it smells good, Catherine. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's half of the battle. Right. I'm just hoping it tastes as good as, as it when I make it at home. We ready to go? Yeah. Be confident. Okay. Well done, Catherine. Thank you. So I've made a coconut rum and raisin ice cream. 
salted caramel and pecan um, plantains with a topped with some rum. So enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. The plantain's really tasty. I, I love it with the pecan nuts as well. Um, I could eat that all day. There's plenty of flavour in the ice cream. It has split a bit, so it doesn't look the best, but when you eat it all together, it tastes good. Mm. It's a big, thick, sweet, sticky, nutty thing. I don't know. I like the ice cream. The texture puts me off. It's grainy. It was tougher than I imagined it would be, because I've practised it at home and everything went perfectly, but when that added pressure of the time frame is added on, everything just goes out of the window. It's got roast partridge with green polenta, partridge you, which is right up my street. I, I do like a game bird. Obviously, I've had polenta, green polenta. I've I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've never had it, but let's see. What's left to do, Giovanna? Just plating, really. These need to go in for a couple more minutes. Everything else is done. Very, very nice. Let's get these crumbs on and go. Let's go. Nice. Um, I've made for you today a uh, roasted partridge breast with a green herb polenta, a griddle baby gem, sourdough and pine nut crust and a partridge jus. I think uh, Giovanna's done a really good job here. Um, the partridge is, is cooked nicely. The polenta, which I wasn't actually looking forward to, that's really worked well. The actual flavour inside of it is actually really good. This dish is the best so far. Um, this one's probably the most complete. I like the partridge. It's soft and it's buttery and I'm picking up the vibrancy of the herb. However, I do not like that polenta. It's really quite strong with aniseed. I have to disagree with you on that polenta. I love that polenta. For somebody out of their own kitchen, an amateur, I think that's a pretty good plate of food. Just three minutes, then we've got to serve these pears. Thank right? you. It's simple, but the simple things in life are always the best. What goes on after this cream? Just the crumb, and then that's it. So I've cooked you a poached pear, poached in sweet wine, with lemon mascarpone cream and a ginger crumb. Thank you. Have a good day. The pear is nice and soft, but the ginger crumb, that's quite, it's quite strong. But when you mix it with the, the pear and the mascarpone cream, it balances in harmony for me. Mm. Your mouth fills up with this extraordinary flavour of ginger and the heat of the pear. That's a rather grown-up, lovely set of flavours and textures. It's so little time. It's really tough. Um, and when you go back in and it's like, you've got 15 minutes to do another four. You've got 10 minutes, you're going to be on time? Probably not. Ballotine of crocodile? Well, that's not something I was expecting to come and <laughs> eat today. But it would be a pretty big ballotine, any crocodiles I've seen. <laughs> um, You have to push, Lindsay, because you run yeah. out of time. It's a bit late, then. Yeah. 
Bring me a crocodile sandwich and make it snappy. Put it. Really sorry. Okay, you going? Yep. Go. Wow, that's late. Thank you. So I am so sorry for the delay. What I have cooked for you is a ballotine of crocodile with crispy chicken skin, a tarragon white wine sauce. There's some cavolo nero in there and some leeks and a bit of mash. Enjoy, hope you like it. The texture of the crocodile and the actual taste of the crocodile reminds me a bit of the sausage meat and the sauce it packs a punch of the tarragon and you taste the wine and the cream in it. I like the charred leeks, the crispy skin, really nutty, really crispy. I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> with that. That's uh, it's nice. I'm sorry, guys, I don't like that. What? I don't like the crocodile at all. It's kind of weird. She's given herself so much to do. The timing is awry. Those leeks are too hot. But I tell you what, the main piece, that ballotine of crocodile chicken and chicken mousse is absolutely delicious. Pineapple and cheese and coffee. I don't know. I mean, if it works, great. But um, yeah, I'm a bit worried. You've got four minutes. What you got to do, you've got to roll this. Yep. And then what else has got to go on there? The, um, it's just basically just plating it now. I've made everything. Nice. That looked good. Lindsay, we should be going now. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Knock them dead. I'll leave that one for you. For dessert, I have made for you some pineapple cannelloni stuffed with some ricotta, pineapple vanilla soup with some coffee caviar, toasted pine nuts, raisins, mint, and some flowers. The pineapple is just so refreshing, isn't it? It's sweet. I think my favourite thing on that plate is the pineapple soup. It's, you know, gorgeously sweetened, but it still retains that freshness of pineapple. I think it's got a lot of potential. I think she's showing off a lot of understanding of different flavours. I think it's a really accomplished dessert and I'd pay for it. I love that. Amazingly, it's not too sweet at all. In fact, it's very refreshing. And that coffee, actually, with that warmth of the pineapple and the warmth of that cheese, which is slightly sugared, is just fantastic. I'm pleased with the food that I put up. I think they know I took on a lot. It's up to them whether I took on too much and that was a mistake or whether I took on too much and they'll forgive me being late. Receive us. You can go like 30 seconds over and you've ruined it. I love the way he's actually infusing the soy with some ginger and lemongrass, just to make it a bit more interesting as well. How long do I have left? You've got 60 seconds left. You're all right. Keep pushing on. What are you doing with that? Some of these were like crispy. Give it a bit of colour. Time is now up. Hello. 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 Oh, look, three plates. Look at you. See, his past experience is a way to help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
What we have today is a pan-fried sea bass um, with a tempura squid tentacles. Underneath that is some pak choy, there's some pea coriander lime puree on the side, uh, some purple sprouting broccoli, and on the side there is a ginger and lemongrass soy dressing as well. Thank you very much, enjoy. Sea bass cooked perfectly. The tempura was very, very nice, very, very crispy. The purple sprouting broccoli, slightly charred, so it had a bit of smokiness. The puree was lovely. The dressing just brought everything together. That's a really, really like clean plate of food. He's, he's done good. Boy's done good. Refreshing. Bags and bags of flavour, bags and bags of colour, and bags and bags of texture. It's clever and food that people want to eat. Seven minutes you've got, Adam. Two sauces, custard, parkin, honeycomb, all ready to go. Uh, just about. I've not heard of this before, but it sounds like it's going to be banging. I think it's like a sticky toffee pudding, is that sort of thing. So really, really sweet. And all those, you know, bonfire toffee and cinder toffee, it's going to be really yummy. Adam, we're ready, let's go. Take your parking to Larkin. So what we have here is traditional Yorkshire parking. It's topped off with a treacle toffee sauce and some cinder toffee. And on the side there's some creme anglaise as well. Cheers. Thank you. The texture of the sponge is great. Cinder toffee sauce is, is lovely. I mean, that sort of real, slightly almost burnt flavour, but then it pulls it back with the vanilla custard. Mm. Um, and the custard's so light with the little flecks of vanilla going through it. You couldn't ask for more on a winter's day. He's been the cook of the day for me. Get in there, son. That is lovely. Proper old fashioned British put. Lovely. I feel like, I don't know, a bit buzzing. Yeah, no, it feels good. Um, I think it did as best as I could. In fact, it actually went even better than I planned. I feel good. I feel real good. <laughs> Can I talk about somebody that not only surprised me, but absolutely delighted me and made a big impression on our guest diners, and that was the young man from Yorkshire, Adam. Yeah. I think he had an outstanding day today. It's good cooking and takes him straight through to the quarterfinal. Right. Giovanna stuck to her roots with the two courses. We had partridge with lots and lots of herbs in it. I loved the whole dish. I didn't enjoy the flavour of the polenta. However, you did, and so did all three of the guys in the other room. So I've... I've, I've... What can I say? I've got to bow to public opinion. As for a dessert, we both loved it. That now leaves us with Lindsay, Catherine and James. We're saying goodbye to two. Cool. Catherine has little things on her plates which are really, really tasty. However, the execution of the dishes wasn't good at all. James got himself in a bit of a panic, but at least he pushed forward, he kept on going. It wasn't a majestic dessert. What bothered me was the cooking of the risotto. Lindsay divided the guests, that's for sure. Uh, Sarah didn't like the crocodile main course. Uh, the other two really did. And she's attempting things that amateur cooks hardly ever attempt. I'm just going to send them some good vibes telepathically or something. <laughs> I think what I've shown is that I'm a battler. And actually, in adversity, um, I've come through. And I think you need that in MasterChef. Words would fail me if I make it through this round. I don't think I'd, anyone could be happier than me. Our 
our first quarter finalist is Adam. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. Our second quarter finalist, Giovanna. Well done. Our third and final quarter finalist. Lindsay. Well done. Catherine, James, well done for getting as far as you did. I've had a lot of fun. I mean, I'll cherish those memories and it's just a learning experience for me. I was one of those people screaming at the TV saying, oh, that's easy, why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Um, I won't be one of those people anymore because I understand what they're going through. Congratulations, you three. You are quarter finalist. <laughs> I'm just pretty relieved. <laughs> oh, quarter finalist. There we are. Oh. I've got more to give, definitely. I don't think that's me peaked in the competition. Well, it's just going to get harder, isn't it? But um, I really hope I go further. I've, I've got hopefully some other stuff to show. Um, hopefully I'll get better. That would be great. <laughs> Next time, it's the quarter-final. Lindsay, Adam and Giovanna will join Richard, Visha and Lindsay to fight for their place, cooking for one of the country's top restaurant critics. Come on. It's subtle, sophisticated. I really, really enjoyed it.